Um, but the next session, um, again, um, very, very interesting, very relevant. Uh, the power of the DNA of a brand. If you stay true to that DNA, the amazing things you can do with it. It is a great story that is going to be told to us, first of all, by Christopher Nurka, the chairman of Future Brand, introducing Marianne Amsoms, the vice president of global communications for AB InBev. So a warm welcome to the two of them. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, everyone who's not at the pool or the bar. I'd like to start with just sharing with you today that hopefully what you'll get out of this session is a different perspective of branding and how branding and media and marketing and communications interrelate. And it's through the power of brand and a concept I will share with you today called the Recept that you'll be able to stay competitive. And I will be handling the theory and the practice will be handled by my client, Marianne, from AB InBev. So, let's get started. First of all, the word transformation and change are the same thing, but transformation is truly the cumulative effect of many changes. And transformation, like the future, doesn't just occur. It has to be initiated. It has to be created. And those who create and initiate are leaders. And leaders, whether it's in your organizations or for your clients, you have to lead with a single concept, and that is the recept. But marketing, communications, and media has changed because it's no longer, as we heard today, about broadcast. I'd like to put forward that it's about reception. You have to build a receiver before you can receive a message. And the old paradigm of broadcast finally created content to define target audiences through selected media channels is not as effective, particularly with millennials who are the receivers who create, edit, curate, broadcast, rebroadcast, and share, which is a challenge for brands. It's a challenge to stay relevant, engaged, and create affinity. And technology only accelerates this. It creates social shared value, not just shareholder value. And this is where the subversion of technology and messaging and content is really changing the way we think about brands. No more so than in Latin America. You're all familiar with the statistics. The most youthful, digitally engaged, literate, active, youthful, thoughtful, brand savvy generation that we've ever seen who are highly cynical, highly engaged, and like to communicate. Let's face it, Latin Americans like to communicate, over-communicate. There's no such thing as under-communication. Whether they're speaking Spanish, Portuguese, English, or working with videos, memes, and iconography. And often, it's all at the same time. So therefore, is a challenge for brands to be relevant, to be engaged, and to find the means to be in that conversation. And so what I'd like to share with you is the thought that perception is as important as reception. And perception is not just measuring eyeballs, views, and viewers. Nor is it just about likes or shares. It's about true engagement and participation. That's what audiences like. And the concept to help you with this in your business or with your clients is the recept. The core word that forms the word reception and is related to perception. And it's the way in which the strongest brands, many of which you'll see on the table, what the strongest brands are in Latin America, are using it very, very effectively. The recept, quite simply from a dictionary definition, is a repeated pattern that forms an idea in an audience or a person's mind. And that idea, when it's formed through sensory stimulation, verbal, visual, and experiential, reinforces a concept and an idea which influences behavior, mindset, and perception. Now, we all know in media, the job is not necessarily just create content, just create the TV show, the event, the experience, the film. It's about creating the audience for that. And creating the audience means you have to understand what the audience is looking for, wants, needs, and 
can participate in. The relationship between brands and audiences has transformed. And the Recept helps you connect with this. And we heard this example earlier. The best brands have a strong idea that create an audience and engage that audience and allow that audience to define the brand, to subvert the very nature of old brand paradigm thinking, which is broadcast. One message sent consistently around the world. No longer true. And what's more importantly is that this is a personal mission now. A personal mission, making brands personal. And creating participation with an audience means creating meaningful participation, not just for the brand, but for the audience or the participant. And of course, what is at the heart of something meaningful and participating in it, whether it's a dinner, a movie, a film, an experience, a conversation, or a belief, the very heart of that is an idea. Participation is only meaningful if there is an idea at the core, so that that idea through Recept forms in the minds of a consumer or a participant. We need more creativity, we need more ideas in the world. Ideas are powerful, very powerful. They help engage and sustain conversations. They transcend languages, mediums, cultures, geographies, and occasions. And they're very threatening to the old paradigm. And the creativity of an idea allows brand owners, content creators, brand managers and participants to break through barriers. And therefore, true leadership is creating ideas that create audiences. The role of brands is to lead, to transform, not just respond to the transformation in society. Brands must lead audiences with a purpose, the reason why they exist, not just to sell more products or more services or experiences. When an idea and a brand become one, you have a recept which reinforces visual, verbal, and experiential. It engages them and surrounds them. And brands today must stand up and stand out for something, like a lighthouse. They shine a beam through the confusion and noise of who they are, what they stand for. And most importantly, if it's purpose-driven of why they exist in the world, people are attracted to it, and you can navigate and make choices. And therefore, companies and brands have this at their disposal and power through their influence but they also have a responsibility. And therefore, recept with responsibility and an idea is what you have to help your clients, and indeed, in your own companies, you must have. You must have an idea at your core to be a leader and to transform. Enough about the theory, and now what I'd like to do is hand over to Marianne to hear the practice with Anheuser-Busch InBev and what they're doing internally and externally. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon. It's great to be here to share our experience at Anheuser-Busch IBEF and to hopefully give some pointers that you may find helpful to lead transformation in your brands and organizations. Anheuser-Busch IBEF is a significant global company. We are one of the world's top five consumer goods companies with operations around the world. We have over 200 beer brands and revenues of $43 billion. Now, I think it's fair to assume that not everybody here knows AB InBev, but that you may know some of our lo local operating companies, such as Ambev in Brazil, Cerveceria Quilmes in Argentina, or Grupo Modelo in Mexico. I am very confident, however, that you all know us through our brands. There's so many of them, Budweiser, Stella Artois, Corona, Harbin, Brahma, Kilmes, and I could go on. And one of the reasons why you may not be familiar with our company is our growth story and our transformation. While our history and our heritage goes back centuries, we have only existed under our current name since six years. We have grown out of a series of business combinations on multiple continents, but with two strong regional tracks, the Belgian European one and the Brazilian Latin America one. And they came together in 2004. Four years later, we combined with the US leader to form Anheuser-Busch InBev. We're not just a beer company. We are a valuable contributor to many local communities around the world. 
We're a force for good as an employer, a tax contributor, as a sponsor or facilitator of many sports, music, and cultural events. So we do have an opportunity to lead and to help transform. And as a global company and a brewer, we're part of the social fabric of communities. And as a category leader, we must demonstrate leadership. And leadership comes with responsibility. Chris talked about that as well. And we aim to go beyond initiatives that are linked to our product and our category, and that focus on promoting responsible drinking. We think that we should, we believe that we should use our global reach to make a positive impact on the societies we live and work in. And it's that belief that started our internal journey, to listen to stakeholders, trying to understand how they perceive us, and articulating what could be our role in the world and how we could make a difference. And our leadership team approached this task by asking two big questions. What would the world miss if we did not exist? That's a pretty fundamental existential question. Think about it. We started asking our employees, we started engaging in consum with consumers around the world, trying to understand what role we play in people's life currently and what is important for us to stay relevant in the future. Consumers' expectations can be grouped in these, under these four big themes. Consumers expect from companies and brands that they promote health and well-being, that they lead in sustainability, it's not enough to be sustainable, that they innovate with consumers, i.e. co-create, and that they create a positive work environment. And AB and Beth colleagues really played a very important role in this exercise, because our very strong corporate culture that we express through our Dream People Culture platform was a constant filter as we began to evolve our corporate purpose. It was critically important for us that our core idea or recept was credible and authentic, and that it was true to who we are as an organization. We had to find a human truth that we could begin to identify with and leverage across geographies, across occasions, across local cultures. And at our core, we play a role in bringing people together. We bring people together through sports, through music, through culture. And that idea is both relevant and credible. It's relevant because we see that more and more people today aspire to reconnect in the real world, not just the virtual world, have real friends, not just Facebook friends. And it's also credible because beer has been bringing people together for centuries. So it is actually the original social network. And that is exactly where we are uncovered our core idea our recept. We offer a lot more than just great beers and experiences. This is our why. Our perceived and real value is that we help bring people together. So that is what the world would miss if we didn't exist. And we articulated that in our dream statement, best beer company bringing people together for a better world. A future positive statement that we could use that we can use to stage our idea of togetherness. So I told you we had two big questions to answer. And this is where the link comes in between our corporate brand and our many beer brands that consumers know and love. And the mother of all World Cups in the spiritual home country of football offered us the perfect stage. And of course, we had a lot more than 60 seconds to communicate and engage. 
We had many voices at the World Cup, because in addition to Budweiser, the official beer of the World Cup, we could leverage many of our local brands. Brahma in Brazil, Quilmes in Argentina, Corona in Mexico, Carbon in China, Jupiler in Belgium and the Netherlands, Hasselroder in Germany, etc., etc. And while football, of course, brings out national pride, rivalries that our local brands captured, capitalized on, there was one hero brand that captured center stage um, at the World Cup for us. And our Budweiser campaign for the World Cup was Rise as One, and I would now like to show the ad. The world came together at the World Cup, which offered a rare common ground of human emotion, transcending national borders, transcending nationalities, and literally bringing people together all around the world. To conclude, I would like to leave you with these key learnings. As Chris said, to lead transformation, you have to create it. And we initiated this at our organization at the very top of our leadership team. We started by asking really tough questions about who we are and how we are perceived. We then sought to identify a core idea that we could rally around by understanding how stakeholders perceive us and how they expect us to evolve over the future. And finally, this journey for AB InBev has just begun. We definitely don't have all the answers. We'll continue to listen and to evolve. So as the world around us continues to transform, so will we. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, thank you. Fascinating story. Uh, but if you don't mind my asking, uh, and don't take this the wrong way, but. Uh, haven't we seen this before? I mean, beer bringing people together. Uh, where is the insight? What, what's new about it? Because it, it's lost on me. Um, World Cup, beer, people celebrating fi victory, football winning, the team, and so on. So togetherness, what's different about how you've done togetherness with beer and football? Sure, I mean, togetherness is, of course, much broader than football, right? I used football as one illustration of how, of how people connect uh, across borders, et cetera. Togetherness is, is reflected in many things. Look, if you think about great moments that you have and that you share, it's often associated with a beer. If there's a party, if there's a nice conversation, if you had an argument with somebody you want to make up, let's, you know, let's have a beer together, right? So there is a very deep human truth and value that we uncovered and that everybody told us about. So we did research with consumers, with influencers, um, of course our own employees who are very important as I, as I mentioned. And that is really something that distinguishes us. There are other values that you can um, associate with different categories, but beer and us as the category leader, of course, really is associated with togetherness. Right. Christopher, what, what else can you give us? What, what, what other nuance can you give us as to how this approach to togetherness has been different this time around? I mean, the interesting thing is togetherness in different cultures means very different things. And the different semiotic codes and cues of togetherness vary. Just like Coca-Cola owns happiness, there are big concepts. 
But what we did working together and also understanding is it's important what you do and how you approach this. And as we said, this is just starting. So understanding in different cultures what the codes and the cues are, creating channels, opportunities, and content that reflects that. And most importantly, staging everything, both internally and externally, from CSR to packaging around this concept will be what makes it different. Unlike a campaign where you're trying to claim it, this is actually being embedded in behaviors. And that's where I think togetherness becomes powerful because as you define that through the brands and through the actions, it begins to become true. Does that mean that when it comes to other beer brands, you will not do the same? Uh, or are you going to roll out togetherness across all the beers you've got all over the world? No, so togetherness and, and our company's statement is what we stand for as a corporation. Now, each of our beer brands have a, has a very different role to play in our portfolio. They have their own values, but in a way they all drive from togetherness. If you, for example, think about Budweiser. Budweiser is all about great time with friends or something completely different. Salartois is about sophistication, savoring moments and experiences. It's all perfectly aligned with this notion of togetherness. And what's next? What's next in the relationship and what you're taking uh, some of these brands? I mean, what, what comes after togetherness? I mean, because we've seen just uh, the exemplification here has been the traditional 30 second commercial. But what else? What, what else are you doing in terms of other platforms, other formats, and so on? How else do you express togetherness? Well, ex togetherness is, is everywhere. And when I said this was a journey for us, so we have only, um, it took us 18 months to evolve our dream statement. And we've launched it internally last March. So we have now rolled it out internally. And the next step for us into 2015 is to find ways to also convey this message externally to our broad range of stakeholders, right? Consumers is one element, but we have many more stakeholders as a company with our size and our reach. So that's what we'll be focusing on um, in our plans for, for next year. And the corollary to that is focus less on what you think it should mean and more on what you think audiences and consumers and participants believe that to mean, and understanding the recept and perception, and making sure whether it's through co-creation, involvement, or engagement, that they link. And I think that's the thing to keep it honest for brands in the future, is that you can't just decide this is what we're going to say and broadcast it without listening and involving others and audiences in it. Right. Uh, Christopher Nuka and Mariana Amsons, thank you very much. Danke thank you. Thank you. Thank you.